Okay, the next tool I'm going to show you is called the push-pull tool, and it's one of the most popular tools, most powerful tools in SketchUp. So I'm going to first click into this first component. Now notice first, third, and fifth square light up. That's because they're tied together, being that they're components. So any changes I make on the first component are going to happen on the those ones as well. So I'm going to raise this up to 12 feet, and I'm just going to type in 144. So I'm too lazy to find the apostrophe. Go to the second component now and notice the second and uh, fourth box light up. And so we're going to do that as well. Now, I'm going to click on it. And then notice if I point to this other box, what I'm doing is I'm holding the button down. The other way would be to click once and then click a second time. There's different ways. So what this tells me is that it's perfectly lined up. If I want it to line up with the bottom square, line up there. If I want it to line up with the top of the model's head, I would point to that. So it's a very powerful tool. It's called inferences. So I'm going to click and that means that those are all lined up. So you want to try that and make sure that they line up by using those inferences. Now again, these are not components so I'm going to do them one at a time raise this one up. I'm going to point to one of these squares and that tells me it's lined up. This time I'm going to switch to this square, use the push-pull tool, raise it up higher, this time kind of a random height, and then switch to this one, random height. I'm going to make this the same. Now I'm clicking over on the shape and notice I don't have to be actually on the shape for it to keep rising and falling as I move the mouse. So I'm going to point to this shape all the way across and it'll line up the height perfectly. Okay, this time I'm going to point to the first shape all the way across and notice the inference lines up the height. So now we're looking at these shapes that are lined up around. Kind of looks like some sort of a city but it's going to lend itself well to some of the lessons we're doing in a minute. Okay, the next tool I'm going to show you is the circle tool and as expected, it, yes, it makes circles, that's right. What it does though, it measures from the radius and so for instance, this shape right here has a 4 foot 6 inch radius. If I want to draw another one directly inside the center, I could do that, enter in the radius I want, if I want it to be exact, I'd put 36 4 inches, and it makes a 36 inch circle. Now it helps that I have this center line here, it makes it easier to, to lock on to something, and I'm going to just kind of randomly draw some of these circles. Now if I go beyond the edge, it will fill in a surface, which possibly I would want to use. It's just kind of a personal choice when you're designing what you want to do. So those are the circle tool. Now the circle tool, you can also apply the push-pull tool to it just like you can anything else. So for instance, notice the circles can be pulled out. And the center line is kind of technically cutting them in half right now. We'll actually probably adjust that in a second. Now these ones, I decided to push them all the way through and then stop them on the edge. So I point to the outer edge. You can kind of see how they did that. So it's a powerful program. Now, as cleaning up that center line, I can take the eraser tool and drag it over those lines. And it's called healing the shape. And I could er erase any of the lines I want to, really. It doesn't generally cause any harm unless you erase a line that is important to the shape, like that one I just did. Sometimes curves can be a little trickier, so I'm going to leave that sh that line on the curves right now. Now let's take the circle tool over on this cube on the left and use it in a slightly different way. So I'm going to find the center, midpoint there, midpoint here. It should give me the inference. There we go. Now I'm going to use a technique I like to call carving. And so I'm going to push the top away and it'll sort of turn glossy looking when it gets to the edge and notice it disappears. You end up with a floating cylinder there. 
Now we could do the same thing on the other side, but since they're not components, I'll have to do them separately. So midpoint, midpoint, and it tells me the center. There we go. So simply take the push-pull tool, push away the top until it turns glossy looking. Helps if you change your angle because then it's easier to see what's going on. So those are identical, at least they should be, um, but I had to do them separately. Which brings us to these five cubes. Now if you remember, three of these, the first, the third, and the fifth, are components and they're going to be identical no matter what I do. Same with the second and the fourth. So let's design these and see what happens as we're designing. So I'm going to take what used to be the fifth and show you a new tool. This is called the arc tool. Now what the arc tool does is it makes arcs, duh, but you're going to click a beginning point and an end point, click, and then you're going to bend the middle and decide where you want it to be. Now notice it is telling you in the information box what the bulge is. So right now the bulge is four feet. Let's just make it a four foot bulge. So I'm going to click and notice the other components changed. I'm going to type in 48 for 48 inches and it'll make that. Now I'm going to take the push-pull tool and watch them design.